Hey, good morning, afternoon, evening to you guys. Hope you're doing well. Let us know who's here. Tell us where you're from. We always love to see that. It's awesome to be back with you on our critique show. So I hope you guys have submitted your photos. I know Jared's got a good batch of them. And uh, we always love to hear from you guys. So hope you're doing well and staying well. Um, we're, you know, we're coming back to hopefully a normal, some normal life here. And, uh, you know, remember, creativity is the antidote for anything you run into anyway. So that's, that's what we're all about here on AYP. Okay, so before I forget, hi, Yvette. Please be sure to subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss any shows coming up. There's my green screen. I'm playing around with the green screen. It's not perfect. Please don't judge me. We're, there's a little corner of light that is uh, needing to be worked on. But anyway, that's just the way it is with, with new stuff. I'm just playing with a green screen. So I'm a photographer, author in Carmel, California, if you don't know me by now. And I have a show here where we're going to critique, and it's brought to you by our friends at uh, Bay Photo Lab. I love these guys. I really do love them. Uh, I'm telling you, I've been using them for decades. I know the owner and I know a lot of the guys that work there. They just give you great customer service. That's the deal. And they have a lot of specials. So right now they're running a special on Exposer. That's what my green screen is made of. These are pretty cool. You see how you can... Uh, attach a photograph to a frame and hang it on a wall. And the cool thing is you can change that out periodically if you want to. And those are 30% off. Those are really cool. I'm, I'm really digging that. And then you can get frame prints for 15% off. That's super handy. If you are selling your work, I totally advise you to sell it with a frame because it, it just polishes the look. It finishes it. And you can get uh, 15% off on those. And as always, 25% off on your first order. So listen, do us a favor, yourself and Bay Photo, get some prints made. You know how I feel about that. It's super important. Okay, so Jared, I want to hear you speak because I want to make sure I haven't locked you out. <laughs> You're there, right? I am not locked out. Oh, good. Uh, okay, great. I, I am here. All right, just wanted to make sure. Okay, so I always start off with one of my photos. This is, uh, you may have seen this, is in my book, Create, and uh, this is a photograph I took when I was in high school. Uh, I tell the story in Create, and this is in the Sierra Madre Mountains, <clears throat> excuse me, of Mexico. I really, really wanted out of high school. I was actually gonna drop out, which just mortified my parents. Uh, I didn't drop out, but I figured out a way that I could go to Mexico on this project for this, you know, my last semester of high school. So I did not attend high school the last semester. I didn't even graduate. I didn't go to the graduation. I had a diploma mailed to me. So I missed out on all those normal things that everybody has. But what I didn't miss out on was amazing photo opportunities. I took my Roloflex two and a quarter square camera and dozens of rolls of film to, this is a Hoya, Mexico, which if you look on the map, it's above Mazatlan, uh, very remote. It's like a day at that time, one day drive by Jeep. And these are some kids in the school there. What I'm kind of, you know, if I look at my own work, I'm sort of amazed that I was able to put them at ease you know, many times you, you just pull out a camera in this kind of environment, people get really stiff. But you can see these kids were actually very relaxed. I love the, the one kid leaning into the other one. 
and you know the other kids sort of in the background and sort of the texture um, that you see in the in the environment of that classroom this was shot i'm gonna guess um i could look it up i actually have it written down but i'm guessing it was panatomic x which is a very low grain film it's very it's as you can see it's not very grainy and it's really well exposed the light was whatever ambient light was coming in through the windows um <clears throat> there were no lights in that room other than uh, window light so it made it made a really good light you can see it's blown out in the background of that window but inside perfect light so that's the story I you know I, I frequently go back to this group of photographs because hey they worked out it really did work out and for me it's an interesting experience to kind of revisit some of my older work and take a look at where I was at that time Okay, so now let's dive in to your guys' work and see what we've got here. So, Jared, tell All us the right. story. And then just as a quick reminder, you can submit your images still. Uh, highly encourage you to. We keep an eye on the AYP Club, which is where you can go. I put a link in the chat. Uh, just uh, if you're not already a member, you can request to join, and I'll approve you. Uh, and we look forward to seeing your images. So this first one that we have here is from uh, Jasan, and uh, the caption that they put with this is that this photo was taken on my mobile phone last year during home lockdown. Wow, I really like it, and you know, it's it's a almost like a, a piece of modern art. Uh, Bob Holmes said he loves modern art because he likes to photograph shapes and um, <clears throat> this really kind of feels like that same kind of you know we've got these shapes and elements and lights and darks and you know but the bird is a punctuation point so you got that in there that's really good and the clouds are very interesting you know background but I really like these I like these forms again it's really kind of an abstract piece we wouldn't know what we're looking at i mean it's, it's obviously a building with sort of an upper part of the structure and black and white definitely was a good choice so good job thank you for submitting that one all right here is from our friend uh chad and uh this is part of his frank or his robert frank's oh, uh wow. series this is robert frank cd collection so this is part of that project that he's been working on you you know you really need to follow up if you haven't already planned this and and put them together in a in a work you know whether it's i believe he said last time that we reviewed one of the images i think he said that he's he is working on putting okay. it into like a project that's together. great please do that because you know robert frank was a very important photographer and filmmaker he was an influencer for annie Leibovitz. Um, and many other photographers. And it's interesting. I mean, this is an interesting story. This by itself, you know, isn't a standalone image because you go, well, okay, what am I looking at? But when you know it's part of a bigger story, all of a sudden it becomes what uh, Dan Milner calls a linking photograph or a transitional photograph. It's part of your whole story. So well done. Keep those coming. I want to see your finished work for sure. That would be really awesome. All right, this one is from Amir, and I don't have any caption for it. Doesn't need one. You know, photos nope. don't really need captions. You should be able to just look at it. And I mean, sometimes it's helpful to know, like the Robert Frank one. But this is, uh, you guys are doing such good work. Um, so this is fantastic. This is a fantastic photograph. We have all this texture and the contrast of, of the woman and her shadow and the man against this sort of pattern texture. One thing that really works, and I did write about it in, in, um, you know, in this book here, this book on composition <laughs> that I wrote, is um, what works really well is if you have a pattern, but you break the pattern. So for some reason, our eyes just love patterns we we feel 
there's something about it that's pleasing. But what you can do is what this photographer did is you break the pattern I mean, you put something in there that isn't following that pattern. And it creates a contrast between, you know, that that texture and pattern and the woman standing upright. And of course, her shadow is brilliant. Um, and then the man, you know, walking forward into the frame is also really interesting. And it shows that you can definitely photograph in broad daylight because that's where the shadow came from. Mm -hmm. This wasn't late in the day because if it were, those shadows would have been a lot longer than they are. So you, you know, you had the sun behind her, so she was silhouetted. Same thing with the guy. Very excellent. And everything is exposed very evenly. I don't see any blown out highlights. So you did a really good job with that one. Bravo. Really makes really makes me think of Bob Holmes, you know, saying there's no such thing as bad lighting, just inappropriate lighting. That is true. Because uh, a lot of people would say, oh, this is bad lighting if they were looking at the scene. But he had a vision. That's right. And executed it. Well done. Uh, this is from uh, Mace, our friend in Poland. Uh, and the caption with this, kids on a bike, I sharpened manually so the kids are out of focus, sister, son, and my daughter behind, we take, uh, we, we take them outside in one of the warmer days. Okay, you sharpened it on purpose so they would be out of focus? Is that... Uh, that's what it said here. It okay. said, I sharpened manually so the kids are out of focus. Okay, all right, interesting. I mean, listen, that's your your choice as a photographer, what you want in focus and what you want out of focus. And they're writing into the frame, which is really cool with these leading lines of the road, you know, and uh, it's a it's a it's a simple, you know, warm photograph of your children writing up to you. Um, it works. You know, the leading I love leading lines always. And you've got a lot of texture you know, again, contrasting them going upright, the texture of the of the street. Yeah, that works really well. Um, I'm curious. I'm mean, just curious. So why did why if you want to put this in the chat, why you chose to have them out of focus? I would I mean, personally, I would leave the child closest to us in focus and the other one out of focus. Just, you know, I mean, that's your choice. I'm just curious what you're looking at and why you made that choice but you know good work all right here's from one of our australian friends jennifer if you guys uh, i love to hear where you're from and who you are so as you join us because i see people are joining us all the time just uh, if you wouldn't mind just say who you are where you're from in the chat that'd be great okay yes. so is there a caption for this yes uh the scary one. spider let me grab it. So raindrops and spiders. I've been capturing images of this golden orb weaver spider in our backyard for the last few days. Wow. She and her diminutive male suitor slash meal. Uh, oh, in the top left uh, corner blurred. So I'm thinking that's that's the former suitor oh. meal. Okay. Uh, over there. Um, so they've been anchored to the clothing line for some time. So they haven't moved their clothing line. And today it was raining, but they're still hanging in there, uh, getting Literally. regular feeds from the local insect population and have remained unmolested by the local birds. Went out this morning uh, when we had a touch of filtered sunlight between the showers. Took this with her Nikon Z50 a, with a 50 to 250 millimeter lens. Yeah, I mean, excellent use of uh, depth of field. It's... Um really cool how you you got that web with the drops on it out of focus and then your main subject in focus and then behind it. that's really shallow depth of field it's an interesting image i mean i you know again we're talking about patterns it's interesting with you guys sometimes we have you know a theme I, it just happens somehow organically but we've got a theme today of patterns and then something breaking the pattern so this is just another example of that the pattern of the spider web being broken by the spider there, the scary spider. So yeah, that works really well. 
And we'll shout out, do a shout out here to Wayne. Hey, Wayne. And um, uh, the Surung, Sir, I'm messing up your name, but thank you from Ghent. Good to see you guys. All right. Keep these Since patterns. We just coming. shout out Wayne. Let's bring up uh, his image. Okay. So here's Wayne's. This is uh, Isabella at the Rainforest Forest Adventure Exhibit in Branson, Missouri on our spring break vacation. Yeah, it's very cool and it's very interesting where she's what she's looking at. I guess you're at this sort of petting zoo or something almost. Um, and I love that, you know, I'm a big fan of frames within frames. So you've got one here with the girl. You've got the one to the right, kind of the, you know, the back area. And then you've got a frame with these iguanas or whatever they are, lizards. So you've got at least three frames going on. Four technically because you have the overall frame. And it, I, I find that always adds interest. So whenever you can find those frames within frames, go for it. It's just going to add interest. Frames, you know, it's funny because framing it, reptiles, there we go. Framing is, it's like basic photography. But just like in cooking, you know, you have certain basics. It doesn't matter how long you've been cooking. You're going to follow those basics. You're going to want a good, and this is my analogy of framing. It's like a good chef's knife. You're always going to want a good chef's knife. And don't ever think, oh, you know, framing is just so basic. It's basic for a reason. You know, it's just, it works because it gives you, uh, in this case, it gives you a, a bunch of different stories that come together and it gives it depth and interest. So good job. And black and white, I you know, I don't know what it looked like in color, but I see why you made it black and white. It, it works well. All right. Our next one here. This is from uh, Bard. I think is how you say it. Uh, no caption. Okay. <clears throat> here we are back to patterns. <laughs> it's, it's just, it just interests me how you guys somehow you, you get together or something. And you say, let's all submit stuff with patterns in it. Because we've got the um, multiple patterns of the uh, stairs, you know, that's a, a small pattern there of the three stairs. But then really the, the bigger pattern is this, the reflection or the, the shadowing um, from the railing, it looks like, falling upon these people, yeah. So pattern, pattern, and then broken pattern. And it really works well. I don't, my only thing is I would probably get rid of this, whatever this is on the bottom right corner, I don't feel like that adds to the image and I would get rid of it um, by standing a little farther to the left, you know, crop with your feet, or you can certainly crop it now, but it pulls my eye away and it doesn't, it's not part of this, you know, it's, this is one thing that's really important is Less is more in, in photography. You know, the, the, the more things that you include, the, the harder you have to work to make them all fit together. And without this thing, and listen, I wouldn't be adverse to picking it up and moving it out of the way. We're, we're, not, I mean, we're not doing a, a documentary photo shoot here. And you are at liberty to be a director and move things around. It's in my book. Get ready to move furniture. Uh, who was it? Uh, I'll think of him in a minute. It was, uh, um, boy, uh, my, my brain isn't working right now. But he said photography is 90%, 99% moving furniture. Um, now that's an exaggeration. It's a joke. But you do have to move things around. So I wouldn't, if that's a movable thing, I'd get it out of the way. Because what would be cool is to see the rest of that. <clears throat> Um, shading going all the way down to the bottom right. That would make a nice diagonal sweep all the way through the photograph. But good job. It was Newman, Arnold Newman. Thank you. Hey, good one, Jared. I know, we use that quote all the time, <laughs> and uh, I had to look it up because I was like, I knew it was somebody famous. Arnold so. Newman, who does these, inc or did these amazing 
environmental portraits, and he has this one of Igor Stravinsky. I actually covered this in my new course. You know, it's just this incredibly clean photograph. And I know that he moved things around to make it look that way. So don't hesitate to do that. We, whenever we go out on a, on a video shoot, for instance, we're all literally moving furniture. I mean, we've rearranged people's whole offices and workspaces and changed the whole direction. The light is coming in, you know, there's a great window, but they're, everything is facing the wrong way. Just move it around. Don't be afraid to do that. You can be active as a photographer or passive, and I prefer that you be active, you know. Photography is about telling stories. Don't hesitate to make that story look great. Okay. All Let's right. see who we've, else we got here. We've got a fun one here. This may look a little familiar to long-time oh, watchers yeah. of the show, Daniel uh, Sawyer. Uh, he had, Last year, he found an osprey nest uh -huh. and got some good photos, kept coming back. Um, and now, this year, he's decided to plan to document the this nesting pair from beginning to end because he's had that opportunity. So this is a male Osprey uh, bringing in sticks uh, for, and then the female Osprey is rearranging them in the nest and building it. So, <clears throat> okay, here we are patterns again, y you guys got together. I see I'm now aware of it. You must've gotten together. It's a conspiracy. It's a conspiracy. <laughs> You're just like, let's give Mark nothing but patterns. And then, okay, so you've got the pattern of this um, bird aviary nesting thing for the osprey. Yeah, perfect pattern with the V, you know, and the framing of the wood and all that. And then the bird itself is, is fitting inside that frame, but also breaking the pattern. So... That works really well. And you've got a great moment there. You know, in animal photography, as with people photography, you want to capture the, you know, it's the decisive moment where something is happening. And you've really got that. It's like lowering. It's like a little helicopter lowering the stick down into this nest. And I don't know another point that would have been more dramatic because the wings are, are you know, within that frame of the V and they're kind of mimicking it too, which is really interesting because the, the wings are on a V shape and then this nesting thing is V shape. So you've got repeated patterns there and multiple frames because you have the frame within the bird and the frame outside. So the, all those things work together really well and black and white, I think is a, a you know, good choice. Um, I doubt there's a lot of color there, you know, that's that's important. Certainly with the wood, that's not, I don't know what, what the osprey, how their coloring is exactly. But it, anyway, it works really well as a, a black and white. So good job. Yeah, and I look forward to seeing more of your project documenting uh, this nesting couple. Absolutely. All right. Here is a new one, newly submitted by uh, Lewis from Miami, Florida. Glad to have you with us. And this image was taken in Lisbon while on a workshop taken with their Leica M10P with a 50 millimeter lens. All right, now listen, I'm on to you guys now. That's <laughs> <laughs> you, I don't know what you did and how you did it, but you just said every photo we gonna, we're gonna submit is gonna have a pattern and a broken pattern to it, so. Anyway, this is brilliant. It's got, look at all the patterns all over the place. And, and geometry. You, yeah, you've got the windows, you've got the f beams, multiple windows, pattern, pattern reflected onto the windows. And we're breaking the pattern with the guy, the person walking into the frame. Perfect. And black and white just works great. I love the the reflection on the window is really cool. And uh, because again, it gives you a multiple frame kind of thing. So you've got one, two, three, four, five windows. One, two, three, four, five, right? And then you've got the reflection. So the, each of those five windows is its own frame. And then you've got the reflection of the ceiling, I believe. That's another kind of frame, yeah. And then you've got 
you know, the, the upper beams and that sort of thing. But it works really well. It's geometry, patterns, and breaking those patterns. And again, black and white. So I see you guys also got together and said, we're going to do patterns that are in black and white. We'll see if Mark picks up on that. So good job. You didn't fool me at all. But All right. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And kind of continuing along the same thing, we've got this one from uh, Pablo. And this one is Ebony and Ivory living together in perfect harmony. That's the caption with this one. There you go again. Look at all the patterns. Black and white. Yeah, the upper beams. So um, let's see what's happening here. Oh, I see. Okay, these guys are walking into the frame. That is that is interesting. And the, the one figure is shadowed completely. And the one closer to the right has got light because of the the light is coming in from the window on the other side which is cool window light again <clears throat> broken patterns patterns are interesting geometry is interesting and then you've you know you've got them breaking the pattern and i love that you've got the guy that's all shadowed with his foot in the air because that gives a feeling of motion so good job Again, All right. guys are and now, on okay. the same page. Now let's break the pattern of broken patterns. Okay. Uh, this one is from our good friend, Bert. Uh, and this was taken at a uh, baseball game. Uh, let me find. Uh, so giving back to others in your community is so important. The ball team I shoot with always gets together with the local uh Bambino Buddies team, uh, kind of partial to the father and daughter taking photos together. That's so really since cute. he said that was the one that he liked the most, I went ahead and chose that photo for the yeah. show. And listen, um, there is a pattern there, by the way, <laughs> of the fence, right? That's a whole pattern behind them. So Bert didn't miss the mem memo. He got the memo. And, the, you know, it's, it's really well framed because you you know you have this kind of loving father daughter arrangement and their orange shirts looking into the camera it's a really cool thing and it's sign of the times with their masks right so bert you did a good job capturing that moment capturing the emotion she looks very interested in whatever is in the frame there and the dad is just doing you know kind of a loving job of how he's holding, you know, he's got his arms wrapped around her. So that's really, it's really cute. It's very, very effective photograph. All right. This next one's from our friend Yvette. And uh, I've actually got two because they're very similar. And I wanted to yeah, let's see show them both. Them both. Uh, so here's the first one, the second one. Uh, and these are my beautiful days of Ramadan are the caption with okay. these. So there's this one and there's this one where they reframed it a little bit to get some foreground element. Is it the same or is it a totally yes, different photograph? Yes, it's the same. Okay, let's go ahead. I mean, or, well, no, they're different photographs moved in different location. Right. So different photographs oh, yeah, okay. of the same sunset. Yeah, I mean, this one is my preference because it's just more of an abstract photograph. And mm -hmm. I think it works really well. It's sort of, um, you just, you know, it could be an abstract painting. Um, and again, you know, that's something Bob Holmes strives for is getting modern art into his photography. So this is like a modern art piece. Let's go back to the other one for just a second. I just want to see that. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't find this at all as interesting because we're, you know, the clouds themselves are such an uh, interesting thing that the the trees growing up or bushes or whatever they are don't to me it don't really help tell that story go but go back to this one so you know this is an example of less is more we have patterns in the cloud and again it's a pattern photograph and the sun basically behind it um it, it, i wonder what kind of camera that you use and you were obviously shooting with a high ISO because it was very dark. I mean, look how dark the ground is. So you have some noise in it. 
You can get rid of that noise though. Uh, there's several ways to process that. So I would recommend just, I know Scott Kelby got on the show and said, don't worry, you know, people obsess over noise, but to me, it would just help the image. Um, you can, you can use Lightroom. I actually have done a tutorial on that. Um, you can use, um, um, one of the a DxO uh, plugins or not plugins, but software that goes along with Silver Effects Pro is called Define 2, and it does a really good job at getting rid of noise. Yeah, so anyway, that's that's just a technical thing to tighten it up. But I like the abstract quality of it and the and the colors that are coming through this. And so shot, that says yeah. Canon. Yeah. Okay. Well. I was just curious if it was an iPhone or so you answered that. Um, okay, good one. And I would stick with this one, just my preference. All right. Uh, here, kind of going on that uh, painting sort of feel. This is from Greg. Said another impressionist photo painting uh, taken upside down in the water reflection with the oh, wind yeah. ripple, ripples at dusk. And this is straight out of the camera. Um, and then they said that I'll probably edit the floating stick out of the sky. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. I, these other little things I would get rid of because they don't they don't ha enhance the photo. And I think that would I think it would really help give you that, you know, impressionist impressionistic quality. So very yeah, it's definitely the way the impressionists were with these little blurry you know kind of dots pretty cool and very subtle colors you know very pastel blue and 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 pink and orange there it's great i love it i'm All not giving right. you guys much of a critique i just clean just clean up the little specks that would be my own thing and whatever maybe you could get rid of this little square thing that's sort of sitting in the middle of i would just go through and clean up all those little those little things because my eye goes that it doesn't really, it's not really part of the story. So I would just get rid of it. And you've got a little noise in there too. You could also get rid of that as well. So just clean all that up. But anyways, it's, it's uh, excellent, you know, for getting your impressionist, impressionistic photograph by getting into the reflection. That's very clever. Okay. All right. This is one from Meg Martin. Uh, this is some iPhone pics of Savannah. I'm going to guess Savannah, Georgia yeah. is probably what they're talking about. Yeah, um, the riverboat. More to come from my DSLR. I just need to work on them once I'm home. Okay. And this is part of a series that she took at this dock area. Yeah, so geometry always works in composition. Lots of geometry here. You know, you've got the kind of rectangle or rather the uh, triangle with the arc you've got the circles you know you've got yeah the paddle wheel the red is a cool offset and the and the yellow you know all those things work together it's a really nicely composed geometric photograph and you know great that you got it with an iphone too I the only little thing I would do is probably do a little tiny bit of cropping here just to get rid of the bottom edge there kind of see, see it kind of pull yeah pulls your eye off a little bit in Lightroom you could do that without cropping too much of the photograph so or you could just do a little crop just just zip that off the bottom because what you want to, you know, what you want is you want the main body of your photograph to be what you're looking at and not have it be pulled away unless there's a reason for it. And I see no reason to have that that tiny edge. Just cut it off. Um, and that's otherwise. Good job. All right. Here's one from Parthna. Uh, and this is part of a really great series. I, I highly recommend that you uh, check it out in the AYP club. Uh, if you're a member, if you're not, you should be one. Um, and they really went into the whole history of um, just kind of giving the first sentence, bronze and brass have 
and uh, em embryonic relationship with the Bengali tradition. And so kind of really going into it, a lot of great photos, but this was one in particular that I wanted to yeah. show. Great photograph. You know, there's a lot of things going on with it. The sweat on his back is what makes it remarkable, you know, because we can see that really clearly and we see this fire going on. And notice all the pattern behind the patterns of the, you know, the wall there, sticks and little bits of light coming through. You know, it's got a lot of interest in it. And there's even a little, another little boy above this guy's head, kind of you have to look around. And one of the good things in a photograph as your eye travels around, you're going to see more stuff. And, you know, again, you want to make sure that that's part of the story and doesn't pull it away. But seeing that little, that other little boy, the young man above the other guy is, is interesting. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't distract. It actually pulls more interest. And it leaves me asking questions. This is another thing our friend Bob Holmes said, he likes to have dark areas and he likes to have things in the photograph that leave you asking questions. Like, what is this? You know, what are they looking at? Why is his back sweaty? You know, those are questions. And I don't expect that to be answered. It could be answered in the caption, you know, the story going on, but uh, it doesn't need to be. It just sort of draws me in and um, it's very effective. It's a very effective uh, you know, photojournalistic shot, because I'm assuming you have a lot of other ones around it as well. Yes, so, yeah. a lot of great images, so highly recommend you go check that out uh, on AYP Club. Great. Good work. All right. This is from our friend Ram, who also put up quite a series of photos around this cherry tree. And I really like this one, though, wow, uh, and the great. caption that came with it was a different look at cherry blossom. Absolutely, because normally, you know, what do we do with cherry blossoms? We, you know, we would do it in color to get all that, you know, wonderful pink and red, you know, color out of it. But you, you know, as a black and white, it's very effective because, again, lot, look at all the patterns here in the geometry going on here. It's a very interesting photograph. And it's it works you know it tells a story about a part of a story about this cherry tree cherry blossoms yeah and, I, and it, it works really well as a black and white i would be curious though to see it as a color photograph because just because cherry blossoms are you know so stunning i'm just curious how that would work out you might put it out there and just so we can see the difference. Um, but it definitely works as a black and white in terms of pattern and a kind of an, again, an abstract work of art. Yeah. And uh, just to show kind of, this was one of the color ones that. Okay. Uh, he now, had. I, now I get it. It's pretty subtle. So you did the right thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wasn't a particularly bright paint yeah. in this case. I know. So. I think it definitely works better as a black and white. Okay, good. Thanks. Yeah, and lots of really good images in it. But that was one. You know, it made me think of like your Paris, your Eiffel Tower photo, yeah. in the sense of you know really looking at something from a different view and taking different it angle. in a way that other people wouldn't yeah. necessarily think of. Because who who goes to a cherry blossom tree and just shoots you know straight up like that? But it was a beautiful image. Jared, let's uh, let's take a break here and mention a couple of things. Um, one is we're doing uh, I'm doing a weekly uh, webinar Tuesday, ten o'clock Pacific. So you know, if, depending on where you are in the world, hopefully you're still awake. In uh, so you know, in most of Europe, it would be seven o'clock in the evening. Do do we have a link for this week coming up or? Yes, I'm grabbing that right now. So I'd love to have you guys join me. I'm going to be talking about the whole key to a photograph. What is that? What is the whole key to a photograph? Well, you'll have to come and join us to find out. So that's uh, Tuesday, 10 p.m. 10 a.m. Pacific. And um, 
if you're not a member of the AYP club, you should be, or uh, AYP noon. plus. It's noon Pacific. I'm sorry, you're right. Because Thank you. at 10, we have AYP plus. That's right. AYP plus is at 10. We take a little breather, and then we come back on the air at noon Pacific. So if you are in Europe, nine hours ahead, it's only nine o'clock at night. Uh, if you're in India, I know it's quite a bit later than that. But anyway, I'd love to have you guys join. There's a, a link there. You can just sign up for it. This is going to be one of my favorite subjects coming up. And so every week I'm giving a talk from one of my books, you know, just to highlight certain things. Like I went over some composition tools in the last one. I think before that we were just talking about some of the general points out of my books. But we're going to cover different topics. So you guys are invited to sign up and come to that. Also, tell your friends. You know, I really would, if you guys have benefited from what we're doing, I'd really appreciate it if you would help us, help me help you, by just getting the word out about AYP in general. You know, they can join these broadcasts. They can come to one of these webinars. These are free, you know, no charge. But... Um, it always comes down to word of mouth is the best form of promotion. And I would love it if you guys gave us some word of mouth. OK. All right. So let's continue on. We'll take a look at a few more before we yeah. end off. And uh, just mentioning AYP Club, uh, we are giving away two weeks free in <clears throat> AYP Club. So you can see two live lessons. And we're doing that for somebody who has submitted a photo that we've taken a look at. So it's still not too late. Submit your images quick. We do like doing the ones that uh, where people are live. So uh, be sure to submit your images. Yeah, that'll be our... two, two live classes, and then you'll have access to the library while you're in there for those two weeks. And we hope you stay a member and keep on board with us because we're going someplace. Yeah. All right. This next one is from Ralph, and this was taken... Uh, this was taken... Oh, I know exactly where it was taken. Uh, yeah, because you know where it's taken. <laughs> it's a place that you enjoy uh, quite a bit. Here's another favorite of mine, pre-sunset uh, Alpen Glow from Yosemite National Park. Yes. I have photographed Half Dome many times. I love the reflection that you got there. That's really great. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, that warm glow off of Half Dome... That's in our logo, by the way. You guys uh, mm -hmm. have seen that in our camera logo. The uh, Half Dome is such an iconic uh, image. And, you know, here's the thing. When you're shooting a, an iconic landmark, it's always tricky, you know, because you don't want it to look like everybody else's photograph. You don't want it to look like a postcard. And you've done a really good job at finding this beautiful reflection and keeping the reflection within the water. So, you, you know, it's not budding out of the water. It's not cut off by the edge there of the, uh, the gravel. And, and then on top of that, you've got a leading line, an S curve of the river leading up to Half Dome. You know, it's kind of that, yeah, that leading line there, which works really well. And of course, the centerpiece, the hero of this photograph is Half Dome. And that Alpen Glow, you know, unfortunately, we've had fires, which I don't know what time of year. This looks like fall. You might have captured it when there was smoke in the air. I have. And it, it gives it an even oranger look. But that's definitely a beautiful, beautiful capture. You know, you've got all these elements working together. So good job. All right. Let's do uh, one or two more and see. Here's one from Eric. Uh, and Eric said that he sat there. This was in Boston. And he sat there waiting for people to enter the scene in the right way. Ah, yes. Good job. Um, okay. So it's an interesting mix of foreground and background. <clears throat> um. I see where you're going. I, I Listen, I'm, I have to, you know, whenever I see something, I'm just going to tell you what I see. But it's a little bit of a competition between do I need 
Am I looking at the foreground or the background? Am I looking at the people? I like their steps into the frame, but it, there's a lot of competition with these, what's going on in the background. So it's not clear to me where I should be looking. I would say if you're going to use, now you've done a really good job of capturing them coming into the frame. Uh, the background, it, while it's interesting, it's not really the story. I would, um, and you could do this in post if you wanted, you could cheat and do this in Photoshop. You know, just put a layer here and just make that, I would, I would, you know, make a shallow depth of field, keep them in focus and put this background out of focus. So we're not competing so much against these two things. This is, this would be my, that be my call with this one. Again, you know, you want to make your subject very clear what, what you want people to look at. And uh, that's, that's what I would suggest for you to do. Take it or leave it. You don't have to do anything I suggest, but that's just my call. All right. Our next one we've got here, this is from Lucian. Uh, this was taken at Avon Beach in Christchurch. I think that's where it was. Yeah, yes, there's your, Christchurch. There's your patterns. You know, again, we're back to patterns. Very cool background pattern with these like beach bungalows, whatever you call these things. Um, and the dog has got his back leg up. Maybe he's taking a, a little pee there where he's just kicking something. But he, it's interesting. I'm not quite thrilled with the position of the dog. There's something about it that, you know, I think that, you know, if you keep firing away, there might be a more interesting... So the background is set. This is one of these photographs where everything is perfect in the background. You don't have to do anything with it. You've got really good lighting. You've got these dark clouds. Things are things are working well there. But I would like, there's just something, I think we could find something a little more interesting about that dog as it moves through the frame. And maybe you have some other frames. That, that's just my own call because I think you've got a really well set up photograph and the, you know it's why it's called the decisive moment you, you're looking for that where everything kind of comes together and it's almost ever just not quite but just look through your other frames maybe you've already got one if not go back there you know see what else is going to come into your frame but but great on the whole composition of it works really well with the patterns all right uh do we have time for one more i think one more so this one is from Thomas Newman. Uh, the message they put with this, first time uploading here, this is a panorama photo of the Teviot Range taken in Cunningham Lookout at Worrell View in Queensland, Australia. Oh, wow. And it's a panoramic. Okay. I never do panoramics. I mean, I, I have a couple maybe, but it's an interesting thing because you get this big wide expanse. And those clouds are awesome. They're just fantastic. So, you know, you've done a good job of, of capturing this landscape. And, uh, you know, with these ominous dark clouds, black and white works really well. You know, you've got a foreground, middle ground, and a background, which is, gives it depth. All those things work together. Um, yeah, I mean maybe <laughs> again who knows if something like a bird flew into the frame that might add some more interest but um i'm not going to i'm not going to hold you to that i think you've done a really good job at capturing a you know the sense of what this place looks like and i i see this as part of a series of images so you know you're photographing this geographical location and maybe you other things are going on, you know, in this series, or you're moving in or whatever. And I see this as a, uh, a linking photograph as part of that series. So good job. And definitely black and white. You guys have been doing some really good, strong black and white. So bravo. 
And Jared, is there one last one you want to end on, or are we done for today? Uh, let's see. I think we can pull one more out. Uh, how about this one? So this is from our friend uh, Chicagoland Jared, Jared Tremper. Uh, and the caption with this one was, it uh, took this at a rainy day at the Chicago Botanical Garden. Uh, he said that, you know, the rainy days can be really fun because there's fewer people there. So there's more opportunities for catching uh, people in, uh, in, you know, specific moments. Colors on cloudy days are more vibrant, he said. Uh, and... Uh, just that he really enjoyed uh, going out there on these rainy days for, you know, catching images like this. Yeah, well, there you have, you know, again, a lot of geometry, which really works, obviously. You've got leading lines with the bridge and the railing. Um, and this piece in the foreground is interesting because it it helps frame the the people, you know, so it's giving your eye kind of an edge there. Um, you know, with the the floor of the of the little bridge that's wet, and the rain is great because that brings out, as you said, it brings out the colors and it it um, you know makes the uh, boards you know the shininess of the boards stand out. So you've got really good framing. It's it's all about geometry and framing, and the people are walking into the frame, which is you know makes it very interesting because. They're moving in towards us. So, yeah, you've got a lot of good elements going on there. And uh, well done on going out in the rain. Not everybody would do that. So that's uh, good on you. Yeah, okay. and Jared included a nice little bit of advice uh, as well. Um, he said that for those who are really shy at kind of like they want to do street photography, but they're a little bit shy if they live near an area um, that is a common tourist area, such as a botanical garden. Yeah. Um, it can be a really good place to go because everybody's got, you know, there's lots of people with cameras there, so you don't stand out nearly as much. Uh, and so that was kind of his advice. As long as you're not taking, you know, really big camera and tons of gear with you, you can fairly stealthily get around and, uh, you know, build up your skill as a street photographer that way. That's great. Good, good advice. All right. Thank you, guys. Good work. And it's always good to see you getting together and uh, having your own like collaboration behind the scenes and saying, OK, we're all going to be we're all going to be <laughs> sending Mark a, a, a bunch of uh, pattern photographs. My camera's out of focus there. So good job. Now, Jared, we're going to give away the two free weeks. Who is going to win that? Uh, the winner Drum is, if you want to give me a second, all right. Yeah, and while he's doing that, just, rem you know, uh, again, I'd love to have you guys along for my chat next Tuesday. If you're not already in the AYP club, you should join it. And we'll be doing these periodically, uh, you know, uh, from time to time we'll be doing our critique show, not every week, but periodically. I'm looking for um, a couple of guests that might might or might not have time next week, so I'll let you know soon who is going to be on next week. All right. Our winner is Jashan. Uh, so congratulations. It was actually the first photo that we took a look at. Oh, good. Excellent. So uh, congratulations. You'll get two weeks free, and I will contact you uh, through Facebook. Uh, to let you know about that. So expect a Facebook message. Okay, great. So once again, you guys are doing awesome. I love seeing your work and I'm super thrilled that you're here today. Okay, Jared, do we have any other announcements before we sign off? Uh, definitely check out if you uh, are interested in the, the webinar talk series that we're doing. The link yeah. is in the chat. Be sure to check that out. Uh, otherwise, keep an eye out. We're posting lots of shorts. You may have noticed it's right. a fairly new feature, uh, and it lets us, you know, bring out some little tips for you uh, more often. And then we have a video coming out uh, all about composition, taking some uh, highlights from Huntington's 
interview. So you'll want to check that out on Saturday. Awesome. Okay, you guys. So thank you. Stay well, stay safe. And most importantly, say it with me. (laughs) Remember to get out and capture your own images of life. I love you guys and we'll see you soon. Take care. Uh, I don't think the...